What's going on? I'm going to take you guys through a zero carb carnivore day of eating. Hopefully this will answer a lot of questions as to kind of what I eat and what I do to maintain optimal health through nutrient density. So I got a little bit of a mess over here. I'm making some beef tartare for another video, but uh, my main meal today, here I have some New York strip steaks I dry aged in my fridge. I'll show that to you guys maybe within a week or two. Here I have a bowl of lamb's liver and a bowl of veal brain. And I'm probably gonna have some beef tartare later as well. So uh, maybe we'll show that too. But uh, first I'm gonna go outside and we're gonna throw these on the grill on a wood fire. Sometimes it's a little hard to get this grill heated up at this time of the year, but uh, you know with the wood in there, the gas, propane, it's pretty easy. For any of you guys that haven't seen my grill set up, I have some old grates on top of the burners and I lay wood on top of that. So I essentially have a gas fired wood grill. These steaks are really dry on the outside so they flare up pretty quick. Over here I have a pan and you can see the bottom is, has, has seen better days. But if I ever want to pan sear something like duck liver or liver, I put the pan on the fire and I sear it in the pan. It limits all of my cooking to outside, so mainly so I don't smoke out my apartment or house, wherever I'm cooking. And it also removes a lot of cleanup and a lot of grease splatter everywhere. Like if I had to decide whether to cook inside or eat my whole meal raw, I'd rather eat it raw. But I usually eat my meat raw on the inside anyway. I mean, it's really just a light sear on the outside, so. I do have some, uh, I have some trimmings from the tenderloin here. That I was using to make the tartare. I never usually eat when I'm outside, but for some reason, every time I film a video, I do. Got a nice crust. I don't want to get it too dark. All right, so we got some nice crusted steaks. I'm gonna bring these inside. I'm gonna let them rest. Uh, since I still got some wood left over, I'm gonna grill some chicken breast for my family. So you guys always hear me talk about nutrient density and the importance of high vitamin foods, but what does this actually entail doing every day? And in my case, I kind of go to an extreme measure and kind of overdo it with most of the vitamins, so to speak. So almost every day I have some liver as well as a source of DHA, whether it's fish roe or brain tissue. Today, I have some baby lamb liver and as I said, some calf brain. Now, the main purpose of liver is to get pretty much all the vitamins, and not pretty much. Liver literally has every vitamin you need, and particularly vitamin A, retinoic acid, in very large amounts, which I believe is the most important vitamin to get in our diet in large amounts. And keep in mind, you wanna get other vitamins with this. You wanna get vitamin K2, you wanna get vitamin D3 when you're consuming liver every day. And you now this is also an amazing source of vitamin C uh, for people that are concerned about vitamin C on a carnivore diet. Amazing source of minerals and B vitamins as well. Highest source of B vitamins. Liver is also definitely the best way to kind of overcome anemia if you're coming from a vegan or vegetarian diet. This baby lamb liver is so soft and mild tasting. It's unbelievable. I don't usually do this. I just usually just swallow it down, but I'm only just to get it out of the way. You know, I don't I don't think I I, I wouldn't say that I enjoyed this food, but it's not like I don't like it. You know, it's not bad. Not something I hate to put in my mouth. It's not something I'm swallowing down. So if you guys try liver and it doesn't taste good, problem is the source. So just in that liver that I ate, I got pretty much every single vitamin I need for the day. The only exception might be DHA to some degree. So here I have some calf's brain and I usually don't eat brain every day and I've actually kind of tapered down my DHA intake over the past few weeks so I kind of want to get back to where I was. I also think I have some fish roe and uh, some caviar I made in the fridge. And to me, I honestly, I prefer fish roe over brain tissue because fish roe is a bit higher in all the other vitamins and fish roe is also a similar amount of DHA to brain tissue. 
Uh, brain tissue only really has vitamin E, vitamin C, and DHA, whereas fish roe has a more balanced profile and more minerals. So here's the calves brain. Very cholesterol-y, rich, very fatty. It's pure fat, really. This isn't bad. Uh, I actually just had a couple bowls of steak tartare for my steak tartare video, so if I wasn't so full, I'd be enjoying this more. Uh, if you guys are concerned about, well, I guess eating raw meat in general, I did a video a couple months ago titled with like the thumbnail is like the CDC, where I explain various parasite and bacteria concerns in raw meat. But since I'm eating brain tissue, in regards to specific prion diseases, you can only get Creutzfeldt Jakob's disease or mad cow disease from either human brain tissue or cow brain tissue that's more than three years old. So since this is veal brain or calves brain, there's no concern about mad cow disease or Creutzfeldt Jakob's disease being transmitted from the brain tissue. Uh, and other animals just can't transmit it. Lamb brain, pork brain, you can't get mad cow disease from eating brain tissue. And guys, if the animal had prion diseases. It might be concentrated more in the brain and the spinal cord, but it occurs in all the tissue in the body. And most people that do get mad cow disease, they get it from eating steak. They don't get it from eating cow brains. Uh, but definitely not the most approachable way to get your DHA. Go eat some canned anchovies or something. <laughs> now, did brain tissue lead to our evolution? I really think it did because it's such a nutrient dense, calorie dense food and an amazing source of DHA that to say that we would have scavenged corpses for the brain tissue and the marrow, and that's what caused us to be able to maintain a higher caloric intake, makes a lot of sense. Uh, but that's enough of that. So I have all my nutrients for today. I'm all done on nutrients. And now it's about like what I crave, what I enjoy, what I wanna do. Um, I'm honestly not too hungry because I had all that tartare, but we'll, we'll have a couple bites of steak and we'll talk about the steak. And, and we'll do like a brief overview of kind of nutrients I've had so far in my day. So these steaks have been dry aged in my fridge for about a month. Uh, let me know how badly you guys want to see my dry aged setup. I got, probably got to do it sooner than I want to. And if we look at the temperature on this steak, it's literally raw. But uh, these New York strips I got are a little tough uh, compared to a lot of the other meat I've had recently. Here's another cross section of the, the cooking temp. This is blue rare. The crust on the outside is really nice from that wood fire. This, dry aging this meat makes the enzymes break down the protein and they're so, it's so much more tender than regular meat and it has like a slight hint of savoriness from the fermentation. I just like sprinkling a tiny, tiny bit of salt on each piece. Uh, this is a Celtic salt. If you guys want to uh, see what salt I use, check out my Amazon shop. The fat on the steak has this kind of like nuttiness from the fermentation. All right, I'm definitely not going to eat any more today. So <laughs> uh, the, the steaks are for calories mainly. I did a pretty severe fast for my candida last week. So I've been like really starving for nutri nutrients and my body's really been craving protein. So that's probably why I ate so much more than I thought I was. And that's also why it might seem like the fat to protein ratio in what I'm eating today is a little bit off, but you know, with the brain tissue, New York strip, the fat's probably around like 60 or 70%, which for my lean body mass is adequate. So again, we, ha we had the liver for all of our vitamin needs. The brain tissue was just for a little bit of extra DHA. The steaks were for some calories and I mean you can look up the, the mineral and the vitamin profile of steak. You're not really getting a lot of vitamins uh, for minerals. It kind of adds up. The zinc adds up. All the other minerals kind of add up and help you hit your RDAs, your magnesium. Total cost for the day is approximately, well, I ate about a pound of steak. That's $7. Guys, I always spend less than $10 a day on food. In general, I probably waste more than that because of all my experimenting and stuff, but I never I never really go over $10 a day in food. So, 
Uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Let me know how you like this kind of... I, I just feel like these aren't that exciting because I only eat one meal and it's kind of tends to be the same kind of thing. So maybe in the future I'll try to do like a raw primal day of eating with a different style and, and see how that goes. But steak tartare video as well as the dry aged fridge video. Hopefully I'll get those out soon within two or three weeks for you guys. Uh, if, if not, let me know. Maybe I'll do them sooner. If you guys want to support me, please just share the video. Check out my Patreon page. Check out all my social media. As I said earlier, my Amazon shop has a bunch of stuff on it that I use. And if you guys want to understand why exactly I do these things and other aspects of my diet that I didn't really show in this video, uh, you can reach out to me one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, via my email, frankatofano at gmail.com. And uh, who knows, maybe in the future I'll do like a, a little book write-up or a, a video course 